Hello, and welcome to the Heart Breathing TV Global Voices. I'm your host, Juan Carlos Serpa. And guess what are we talking today? It's about cardio neuroablation. We just has had a fantastic session on discussion of cardio neuroablation technique with some new stuff. And for that, I'm joined by Professor Jose Carlos Prachon from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and my friend, Joaquin Allende. How are you? Doing great, doing great. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Very nice to be here. Well, this was really interesting, and we had new and a big surprise of the role of the cardio neuroablation in a different situation, that is the atrial fibrillation ablation. How this came up? It is a very interesting point, but it is uh, related to the origin of the cardio neuroablation because I, uh, we develop the cardio neuroablation based on the concept of the atrial fibrillation nest. In that time, in the 90s, we, we, was, we were studying the uh, electrical activity of the atrium by using the spectral analysis. And yeah. we found two kinds of muscle. One muscle with cells very well connected, very electrically well connected, and another kind of myocardium with lose cells, the fibrillar myocardium. Yeah. Uh, spots and clusters of uh, fibrillar myocardium gives origin to the atrial fibrillation S. And we found that these areas are related to the entrance of the vagus. Okay. And uh, nowadays we know that if we ablate the atrial fibrillation S and if we denervate the atrium, we reduce a lot the number of uh, the recurrence of the atrial fibrillation in long term. So vagal effect or vagal response may not be that protective. Uh, it is a, a, a wonderful, a, a, a very important question. Yeah. Very important question. In, in re relation of the electrical activity, okay. we may say that the vagus is arrhythmogenic. Okay. Thanks God, the vagus was removed from the ventricle because it is absolutely uh, arrhythmogenic. Yeah. You think if we have a fibrillation on the ventricle, it's not going to be that yes, good? Yes, yes. yes Hakim, you good. did a great job moderating this session. What Thank were your, your ideas and your insights about this session? What do you think about all of this? Man, I think we had an excellent session. It was standing room only, and people couldn't get enough. We had, so we had uh, initially, Dr. Asivatan presented the anatomy yeah. of uh, the uh, autonomic nervous system. And what was interesting was when he introduced the hierarchy of the, uh, the right and the left uh, 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 ganglia. Yeah. And, and to your point, it's, you know, you, when you do the stepwise approach, because if you ablate the right, like depending on whether you're going for the, if the indication is sinus brady or if the indication is AV block, yeah. you know, if you ablate the right side dead ganglia first, then you may attenuate what responses you'll get from the left. So yeah. the importance of understanding the hierarchical response uh, uh, and how you can, you know, design your ablation strategy on which to ablate first was important. And then we had uh, Professor Pashan yeah. you know, talk about uh, you know, the uh, adjunctive AFib ablation with CNA. Now, that's a new one. So you know, for me, in my experience, um, I used to, so I noticed you know, when I did ablations, like especially when I did cryoablation yeah. and I ablated around the you know, antrum of the right soup, yeah. you know, I noticed some heart rate increase. So that was just a clinical observation. And then I didn't see much publication about it. And then over time, I had s um, some other patients. And eventually today was when it all came to me when yeah. you yeah. gave this excellent talk about how the effects of the uh, vagal innovation and how we can actually improve our AFib outcomes, especially yeah, yes. paroxysmal AFibs. But, yes, you're going to need some control to measure this kind of denervation yes. and to understand the logical approach of this procedure. This was a great session. I think everybody uh, was enjoying and everybody was very interested in this crowded, f crowded room. Yeah. And that's very important. There is a, a very important thing that if you uh, determine the uh, refractory yeah. atrial period during 
vagal stimulation, there is induction of atrial fibrillation in all patients, in all patients. with one stimuli. Yeah. And after cardioneuroblation, if you repeat the same, there is no more induction yeah. of atrial fibrillation. So yeah. in our service nowadays, we use the, this finding in order to end, uh, as an end point of the procedure. I think it's better than adenosine test and isoproterenal test. Yeah. Hmm. We have a lot to learn about this. We have a lot to study and to change things. Maybe this is going to be a new way to treat atrial fibrillation. It was a great pleasure having you both here. Thank you so much for your time and for sharing your time with Global Voices. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank it you was a pleasure you. having you here. Thank you, yeah. all of you. There is never enough questions and we need to look for more answers. Don't forget to have an amazing day and see you in the next episode of the Global Voices.